Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining The Brain 202, Gardening and Editing and Evolving Your Brain. Today's webinar is all about taking an existing brain data, brain that you've created, and going back in, revisiting a few different areas of your brain, restructuring, rethinking uh, how your thought and content and data is all connected. As your brain grows and evolves over time, your digital brain, from time to time, it's necessary to go back, as we like to say, do a little bit of gardening. Uh, get rid of thoughts that are no longer needed, uh, uh, add new subcategories, and restructure the way your thoughts are connected. And I do that on almost a daily basis. As I'm navigating through my brain, I'll see a particular area where I drop some thoughts in very quickly or some content in very quickly. And it's closely related to something else in my brain or it's starting to get a little bit cluttered in a particular area and I need to clean house just a bit. Get rid of the unne unneeded thoughts and restructure how my thoughts are being displayed and how I'm accessing them. So that's what today's webinar is all about. We're gonna be cleaning up some areas of the brain that have become a bit overgrown. And I'm going to be sharing with you many different possibilities that you can use to help you re reorganize your brain. And it's really up to you to choose the best option that, that fits for you. Uh, so don't feel that uh, you need to uh, you know, be able to do all of these steps that I'm going to show you. I'm just showing you a variety of different options just so that you know that they're there and available. Now, if you're just getting started with the brain, we do offer a Brain 101 class. Every week, typically on Fridays, we'll have the Brain 101. Please feel free to join us for a Brain 101. That's where we really get started with just the basics, creating thoughts, adding attachments to those thoughts, interlinking those thoughts to one another, are the basics that you need to know in order to use the brain application. Today's the next step, going back in and using some more advanced features. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got two sample brains that I am going to be sharing with you today. And I do want to point out that these are brains that you can actually download from our website. At the end of the webinar, I'll log into our website and show you on the applications page where you can download these sample brains if it's something that's of interest to you or a brain that you want to utilize to get started with the application, um, <laughs> excuse me, or just to use as a sandbox. So let's go ahead and get started. You can see I've got a brain open called My Brain. And in this particular brain, I'm gonna click on My Work. And you can see that in this area of my brain, I've been doing a pretty good job at keeping things pretty clean, keeping things uh, running on my clients area. I've got a nice structure for all my VIP clients, my clients listed by industry. Um, I'm keeping track of all of my, my sales, my operations, marketing projects that I'm doing, business management, project development, et cetera. All nicely laid out. I've got subcategories, and I'm even using a lot of different thought types and tags and icons to identify green light projects versus stalled projects versus hot projects, projects that I'm currently focused on, et cetera. So, very, very easy for me to navigate through that area of my brain, all of my work information. Since I'm in there on a daily basis, I'm doing a good job at keeping it clean. Now, if I jump over into my personal life and click on my personal life, um, I hope this isn't a reflection of my own personal life. Things are a bit of a mess. I've been dragging and dropping web pages in that I'm interested in, creating new topics from time to time. And... Uh, new thoughts or new ideas that I have, hobby, interests, et cetera. And I'm not really spending a lot of time structuring this data. I simply drag and drop something into the brain off the web or drop a document in or create a new thought and start adding some notes right away. The time has come to really clean up this area of my brain. And those of you that have been using the brain uh, now for uh, many years, potentially many decades, um, this will happen from time to time. You'll have an area of the brain, a project that you were working on where things uh, simply started getting a little out of control. You kept dropping data and information into the brain. Now it's time to clean it up. So I'm going to share with you a few different samples uh, and, and ways that we can clean up a, a brain of, of this magnitude. 
Now, the first thing I'm actually going to do is I am going to take a screenshot of this brain. I've got a nice little app uh, over here called Green Shot, and I really want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I'm going to say capture screen, and I'll simply drag and drop, and I'm going to save this on my desktop. So this is going to be saved on my desktop. I'll just leave the file name, save. So there it is, it's actually over on my other monitor. So we're gonna come back to look at uh, this particular picture after we've gone through and restructured this area of my personal life, just to compare apples to apples on, uh, on the restructuring that I'm doing. Now, the first thing that I notice right away when I look into this area of my brain is that I've got a lot of different people. Lisa, that's my sister in Houston, uh, my wife, Laura. I've got a, a thought for my dog, for my mom. Uh, for my kids. So I've got some people mixed in with all of the other house repairs and animal adoptions and travel websites and so forth. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new thought simply called family. So now that I've created this thought, I'm seeing the other thoughts over on the right as sibling thoughts right now. I can simply drag and drop them right into place underneath. And you can see the brain actually restructures. Uh, Beatrice is one of my dogs, and I think of my pets as part of my family, so absolutely. And notice I haven't released the mouse trigger quite yet. I could drag Beatrice over to be a jump thought off the family. Uh, she could be a parent thought up above. But in this case, I want subcategories down below. So under family, I'll have Beatrice. Uh, there's my son, August. And I'll just scroll through this list really quickly. There's Laura and Millie and my mom. And let's not forget Spencer. I've got dad in there. So I think I have all of my family members. Now, I actually want to separate out my pets from my, my real family. So I'm going to even create another subcategory called pets. And move pets even further down the line. So Millie and Beatrice fall under a subcategory of family called pets. And also over on the right, I had a lot of information about my pets, my vets, uh, pet adoptions, some interests that I have in, uh, in animals. So animal adoption, I'm gonna bring over. And notice I'm just simply dragging and dropping them from the sibling area down to a child spot. There's my pet sitter information. And I know I had some vet information down below. So vet. And once again, I now navigate down to pets and I'll move over. Animal adoption, my pet sitter, and vet. And just to make Millie and B stand out, I'll make them jump thoughts. There's really no rule, right or wrong, as to when you should have a child thought versus a jump thought. In this case, for my thought pets, underneath pets is going to be pet information. My, my pet sitter, my vet, uh, animal adoptions that I'm organized with and I volunteer at from time to time with my kids. And then my jump thoughts off of pets, in this case, will be our dogs, Millie and Beatrice. So let's go ahead now and click back up to personal life. You can still see that it's pretty cluttered. There's a lot of information. So I'm gonna create some more subcategories and go through this process again. In this case, I'm gonna share another tip. And I typically share this tip on the Brain 101 class and this involves using a semicolon to create multiple individual thoughts at one time. So underneath personal life, I'll create an area. I've already created family. I'm also interested in food. So I've got a lot of food thoughts, health and fitness. Semicolon, an area for my hobbies. Finance. Travel and an area just for all of my home renovations and things going on around my house. So I've uh, not cleaned the area up so much at this point, I've added more thoughts, but these are gonna be thoughts uh, that these other groupings are categorized in. Now, once again, I can click on a thought and just simply drag and drop. So I saw some home renovations, and if I scroll down, there's house repair, um, insurance, uh, goes under house, and if I scroll down, um, it'll take a while, but I'll find all of 
um, everything that belongs into that category. And also I brought in insurance. I also have a thought called finance that I just created. So finance and under finance is going to go, well, I'll click and drag. Um, I had that insurance thought. So I'm gonna start typing in the word insurance. And you can see there's my insurance thought. So it's right now under home, uh, which is a valid subcategory. All It's my homeowner's insurance. Uh, but insurance also falls under finance. So I'll double click. Now this one insurance thought falls under both categories. So again, in the future, when I'm thinking about my data, if I need to look up my policy number, I need to make a claim, whatever the case may be, uh, check on prices, refinance my, my uh, and look up my insurance. Again, regardless of whether I'm thinking about my home or thinking about finances, I can still get to the thought I'm looking for. And then also under finance, we'll simply drag and drop in uh, my investments. We'll go here, retirement planning, obviously. Um, and if I scroll down, I've got upcoming expenses where I keep track of all my bills, et cetera. So a few more categories that go in that area. So now I'll share another method with you. Again, I'm still just getting all of these, this massive uh, conglomerate of random thoughts into specific subcategories so I can navigate through my personal area very easily. But now I'm going to use another feature that we're going to be looking at quite extensively on today's webinar, and that's the mass select feature. So I'm going to simply hold down the control key while I click on a group of thoughts. Now you can do this on the Mac with the command key. And you can not only control click on individual thoughts, so I'm going to start with the very top, it's airlines, so that goes under travel. I will control click on airlines that added it to the group. Um, urban travel, again, click on control. And upcoming trips, tropical vacations. Now, if I accidentally click on something, technology has nothing to do with my uh, personal life travel. So I need to remove that from my selection box. I can control click once again. I can also control click over in the selection box. So it's just a toggle. You're adding thoughts or removing thoughts from the selection box. And there's a lot that you can do with the content in your selection box. Once again, I'm gonna click on control. And this time, notice I'll drag a little square around a grouping of thoughts to add them into the selection box. Snorkeling and diving and that's probably it for all of my travel thoughts. So I've added those into the selection box. Again, we're gonna take a look at all the different features that we can do, can do with that selection box. But for now that, I've, now that I've got them in that grouping, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to unlink them from personal life. So these thoughts are still floating around out there in my brain, not connected to, potentially not connected to anything else. They may have sub thoughts down below or jump thoughts, but I've unlinked them from the current active thought in the brain, personal life. And so now I can click on travel and I right click in the selection box again and I select the option for linking the selection, the thoughts that are in my selection box as child of the travel thought. So I've very, very quickly unlinked them from personal life and moved them over into this travel section. And once again, if we return back to personal life, Things are starting to shake, take shape. And now I'm going to go through the rest really quickly. And this is typically the feature that I use, that selection uh, option. So fitness planning, fitness goals, um, uh, not food, there it is, health and fitness, healthy eating, healthy living. And let's see what else. I think that should be it. Those are all going to be unlinked from personal life. So I right click and I unlink those selections and go into health and fitness, right click in the selection box and link as child of health and fitness. So you can see very quickly, I'm starting to clean up this area. Hobbies are going to be gardening, uh, music. My recipes is gonna go into food. So we'll take care of that in just a second. Art and culture, sports. That can go in health and fitness as well. So I'll drag a link from sports up to health and fitness. Another option that you have for linking two thoughts together. So notice now sports falls under both categories. And let's see what's left. Under personal life, just a few. So banking, once again, will go under finance. 
So I'll use that uh, drag method from the gate. Technology goes under hobbies. Uh, medical under health and fitness, as well as finance. And now I'll unlink those as well. So I right click in this scenario, right click on a link between two thoughts. Uh, this is between medical and personal life. Now that I've moved medical over, I can right click and I can simply oops, let me right click on the right, right, right location. There we go. Right click and select to unlink. And the same for technology. So I'm just hovering over to make sure I've got the right link, unlink technology. Restaurants, that's gonna go under food as well as hobbies. Food could really fall under hobby for me as well. It's really just a matter of personal opinion. I'll unlink that. I'm gonna unlink my banking thought as well. And what I'm reading right now, so that's gonna go under my reading log, it's gonna go under hobbies as well. So I'll unlink that. And voila, I think I have my subcategories that are important to me. So really quickly, if I need to look up someone's phone number, I can click to go into family, uh, researching some uh, things going on with the house. I click on home. If I'm just more interested in travel, I can get right to that subcategory. So these are the subcategories that work for me and my life, my hobbies and, and my specific categories and interests. And that really cleans the brain up a lot, but I'm gonna take this a one step further. Notice that many of my thoughts have these little zoomable icons associated with them. I really like that visual aspect of identifying personal life. I've got a little picture of a house for my home. Um, I really like that aspect of adding icons to visually identify uh, thoughts or categories within my brain. And to do that, I can alt click on any thought in the brain. So I'll alt click on family. And there's a little plus sign over here on the left. This is the thought properties display. And with this open, I can click on the plus sign and select a stock icon. Now I've loaded up my own stock icons. Um, uh, the brain comes with a default set of stock icons and they're a little bit differently from the ones that you're seeing. That's because I've simply modified and created my own icon library that works for me. So I'm gonna go into health, because I know there's a picture of a heart there for my family, that works for me. And uh, I'm very interested in food, so I'm gonna activate the food thought, click and click on the plus sign, select stock icon. So for food, there's a whole food category, and I can just pick a picture of a carrot or some vegetables. And I'll do one more. Let's say I'm really interested in some upcoming travel. I'm gonna click on travel, add the plus sign, and I'll do a few steps here. I'm gonna select the stock icon. And if I go down to travel, um, what looks good to me? I can really pick anything. If I pick something and then decide at a later date, uh, well, that's not really the icon that I want. I can simply go back at any time, click again, select stock icon and pick something else. This little camper is a little more my style. And also in this um, thought properties display, I can change the look and feel of the thought. So I'm gonna click on the color of the text, change that to a really nice bright yellow and change the background to a really dark, we'll just change it to sort of a dark brown, dark orange, just to make that thought stand out a little bit. Since I'm planning a summer vacation right now, um, I want that thought to be brought to my attention just visually within the brain. So things have cleaned up quite nicely and I can very easily navigate in my personal life to the particular category that I'm interested in or, or that I'm currently thinking about. I can always go back and restructure. You notice that food area was kind of sparse. Um, but if I take a look at my hobbies, um, I thought I had a recipe, maybe even do a search. Uh, my recipes, there it is. So, oh, my recipes still following on, I didn't even notice it, still following under, uh, falling under personal life. So I can link this my recipes up to food and unlink from personal life. So I can always go back and these are the types of very quick, very subtle changes that I'll be doing in my brain um, as I'm working on a particular project. I restructure from this time to time or I notice I have a particular large grouping under a project that I'm working on of 
uh, presentation notes or meeting notes. I'll subcategorize and group those all together really quickly. And that's actually the step that I'm going to take next. So before we leave this brain, I just want to do that side by side comparison. You can see how clean and easy it is to navigate into something that I'm currently thinking about in my personal life. And this is what I was faced with before. So if uh, previously I was interested in looking up some scuba diving and snorkeling, uh, diving, not under D, uh, I thought I had a diving thought. Um, that's not to just, oh, there it is, snorkeling and diving, that's it. So it takes me just a moment to find that thought. And again, as my brain continues to evolve, this might be a scroll bar. So I'm scrolling through looking for diving or I'm doing a search Whereas I know oh, that's all about travel. In my personal life, I can click on my travel thought and I've got just that grouping of thoughts related to my travel. Very easy to find that snorkeling and diving thought or tropical vacation, click and get right to that thought right away. Much, much faster with this nice cleaner display that's falling under personal life. So let's go ahead now and jump into another sample brain that I have. And I'm faced with a bit of the same scenario. Now this is a business brain. This is a brain that I use actually uh, every Friday on the brain 101 classes. And I've got one particular category in this brain. If I reach down to, um, well here, I'll go into my clients and clients by service level, one of my gold service level clients that I'm working with, and that is Instant Dynamics, and specifically their Reach Out ad campaign. So this is an ad campaign that I'm working on for this client. And over the past year, I've been dropping in a lot of different documents and a lot of data. And once again, things are starting to get cluttered. But I'm going to share with you now another option that you have as far as how you can classify and categorize this information. I want to be able to see everything right up front. I don't have so many thoughts in this area uh, that it's too jumbled up or too cluttered. But as you can see, meeting notes, for example, here's June 2018 and uh, way over here, April 2017. I'd like to group these thoughts together. And I'm going to do that with um, a series of different thought types. And a thought type is a classification for a specific type of thought. Uh, thought types and tags that you utilize in the brain can be applied to a thought, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And it's a way of uh, not really creating a new thought in the brain that everything just gets connected to. You can see this reach out uh, campaign, it's an active project. But if I do a report, if I run a report and say, all right, show me all my thought types that are active projects. You can see I've got five different active projects. So now I'm running a report and I'm seeing that new web design, that falls under American shipping. Uh, marketing budget, uh, that's just simply under marketing. Altogether now is another instant dynamics uh, active project. So these are all my active projects. They're not all directly linked to one another within the brain, but they share a common attribute. They're all active projects. And I have that defined with a thought type. When I mouse over the thought, I can see it's an active project, or I can run a report, or I can go into my brain and click on the buttons for thought types and tags and go directly to the active project thought type. And this actually does display them on the brain. But when I click on one, and right now I'm working on this reach out, notice the active project thought had a little halo uh, around it. It disappeared. It's not typically visualized in the plex. So I can find all my active projects or all my thought types of a particular type very, very easily. And I'm also going to use thought types for grouping this large area and cleaning this large area up. Once again, I'm gonna take a quick screenshot just so we can go side by side. So take a close look at what we see on the screen and I'll open up my little screenshot taker. And we will remember exactly what things looked like here under the reach out ad campaign. So that is being saved once again on my desktop. Let me just verify that. Great, so I'll keep that right over here so we can open that up 
after we've cleaned things up a bit. So let's get started. Let's create some new thought types. Uh, now I do have existing thought types already there. So let's first just assign an existing thought type. Many times people download our sample brains, <clears throat> excuse me, from the brain.com slash app. And many of those sample brains have thought types built right in. So if you're creating a personal brain from a sample brain or a brain on a specific topic or a business brain, we've got a lot of pre-built in thought types. And this brain has built in thought types already. So for example, <clears throat> the winning edge, that is a presentation. And I know if I go up to my thought type list, I'll have presentation actually showing up in this list. There it is, presentation. So again, I can right click on an individual thought to modify its thought types. So I right click and I simply select uh, to create a thought type in my list. Quite a bit of different options there, but right at the top, set thought type to presentation. So I get a nice little graphic that I've applied to my presentation thought type that is automatically inherited on that thought. But as I was about to say, again, I can utilize my thought selection box within the brain. So I'm gonna start control clicking on some different presentation thoughts. This checklist is all part of a presentation. Before I go into my presentation, I wanna look at my checklist. And if I scroll down through this list, the future of eSolutions is also a presentation. And my product comparisons is a document that I'm using for presentations as well. So several different presentations. Now I can right click in my grouping of selected thoughts and I can apply the option of assigning a new thought type. So all thoughts currently in my selection box. So their thought type will all be presentation. And you may have noticed right away, let's go ahead and close that. Right away, suddenly all of my presentation thought types are now grouped together. So rather than being you know, one in the upper left, one in the lower right, in this long grouping or this, this large grouping of thoughts, they're all collected in one particular area of the screen. Um, next down the list is a person. This is actually a manager. These are the different managers that are working on the account. So once again, I have an existing manager thought type. <clears throat> so I'm control clicking on all of my people that help to manage this account. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'll right click and set thought type to manager. So under people, you can see there are my manager thought types. And now those people are all appearing as manager. I'm gonna take this one step further rather than just simply grouping them together they are my managers i want these four people to be jump thoughts the managers uh, play an important part so again i click and drag and relink them as a jump thought and one of these thoughts is not like the other alex is actually the account manager for reach out or, or instant dynamics rather and Alex is really taking the reins on this particular uh, topic. He's going to lead all presentations for the reach out ad campaign for this client. So I'm going to double click on the link that connects Alex to reach out. And that allows me to apply properties to the link. So you've created your brain, you're, you're displaying all the different relationships between your data, between files and documents and people and, and events and categories, you can also define the relationship between two thoughts. So here's an ad campaign and Alex, and I'm simply going to type in the label of, uh, he's simply the leader for this ad campaign. <clears throat> and I can make this link stand out a little bit. Let's say I want sort of the bright red link. And now I can clearly see, you know, they're all managers. Steve Gibson is a manager, Jan is a manager, but Alex is the leader of the Instant Dynamics uh, Reach Out ad campaign. And so I've classified that link or I've specified that link in my brain. And it doesn't matter where I have Alex displayed, I could even make him the parent thought. Uh, he's the leader of the Reach Out ad campaign, so I can make Alex the parent thought of this Reach Out ad campaign but it really works best for me to simply have them linked as a jump thought with the other managers that are working on this account. 
So let's go ahead now and create a new thought type from scratch. So you can see how you can add your own thought type. Uh, next on my list are some research uh, documents that I'm doing. So I've got this Amazon server I'm researching, that that's where we wanna host all of our data. So again, I'm gonna control click on Amazon. Uh, I've got some graphics that I'm collecting, this Europe website, Great Cube, and Quince Photography is also some research uh, that I'm doing for this ad campaign. Now, if I right click and select to apply a thought type, if I look through this list, I do not see research appearing. So I'm simply going to create a new thought type. So I've got the option, new type, and I'll type in the thought name, research. And so these are all now research, um, or a, they've been applied the research thought type. I can click on the research thought with a little halo around it. Let me go ahead and close my selection box. Notice that research, when it's the current active thought, I can activate any thought type or tag uh, by the buttons here in the brains menu. And I can apply what a research thought type will look like. So I'm gonna click on research to open up its thought properties and select the stock icon. So let's pick something maybe with science, uh, I'll say school research. There's a nice little microscope that looks great. I'm gonna take it again, one step further. And since it's research, I really want it to stand out. I'm gonna have yellow text on a very, uh, yellow text, yeah, on a very dark background. Great. So there are all of my research thoughts. And if I come back to reach out ad campaign, you can see the research, which is the most important part component right now of what I'm doing for this ad campaign, really grabs my attention and really stands out. Now, this last grouping of thoughts are all meeting notes. So once again, I'm gonna click on the control key, so I click control and drag on all of these different dates and right click apply the thought type. Now I thought I had meaning notes, but I'm not seeing it in the list. So really quickly, I'll just create a new thought type and apply those as meaning notes. I didn't see it appearing in my list, but luckily the brain reminded me uh, that it was there. So these have all been applied the category of or the thought type of meeting notes. So those have been applied to those thoughts. And if at any time I ever create a thought type that's too closely Visually, you can see my meeting notes are sort of a light green text on a light background. So are my active projects. Not a problem. I can go to my meeting notes. There they are, meeting notes, and click. And it's a universal change throughout the brain. So I want to change the graphic. I'll select a new stock icon, and I'm just going to go something very basic gray, but let's give it a darker background. Great, there are my meeting notes. There will certainly be no mistaking between my meeting notes that's going on for this active project and my active project thought types. So the advantage of setting those up is number one, you can group them all together. So now very, very quickly in my brain, if I'm looking for a meeting note, I've got them all grouped together, clearly identifiable, and I can get directly to that June 2018 meeting. Hasn't happened yet, so I can click on it and start talking about over in the notes what is going to take place in this very important June uh, 2018 meeting. Now, now, if I ever apply an attribute to a thought uh, that is different than the, the thought type, the individual thought level attribute is going to take precedence over um, what I like to call a recessive thought type. So. If I decide, all right, this June meeting, very important, again, hasn't happened yet, I'll just make a subtle change. I want the text to appear as yellow, and I could change the graphic if I want, but notice it stands out a little bit differently than my other meeting notes, because this is an upcoming meeting rather than notes that have uh, already come from a meeting that has taken place. So you can apply attributes on the thought level by opening up the thought properties display, um, or you can just simply assign a thought type and if no colors or graphics have been applied to that thought, they'll inherit the thought type graphics uh, or uh, font 
or back, or not font, but color or background, et cetera. So a couple of different ways that you can really classify the information that you've added into a brain and clean things up to really make it very, very easy to navigate through a brain in a, in a particular area that has become a little uh, uncapped or just to become a data dump for you. And one again, I really just wanted to share with you what this brain looks like in comparison to what we started out with. So under reach out ad campaign, if I needed to find that June meeting that was coming up, um, there it is. It takes a minute just to go through, in this case, just alphabetically. Uh, so it's not too bad. But if I knew there was a 2018 meeting that hadn't happened yet, and I was looking, well, it's not August, it's uh, maybe it's in September, not under S, it's going to take me a minute to find it. Now that I've created these thought types, the brain groups them together, I can find all of my meaning notes and specifically find a particular thought that's very important. Now, I want to share with you a few even more advanced features uh, that you can utilize to clean up a brain. These are features that we typically don't share. We certainly don't share in a brain 101 class, uh, some more advanced features. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, running reports, adding content to your timeline, and further organization of large grouping of thoughts. In this case, I'm going to use the brain's hidden ordering system. So built into the brain is a way to organize groupings of thoughts uh, with without having to visualize it in the Plex or clutter up the Plex. In the past with the Brain 8, <clears throat> let's say I wanted to move June up to the top of this list. This is the most important meeting because this is the one that's coming up and this is where you know, my client is gonna sign that contract or we're going to close the deal for a new uh, five-year term, whatever the case may be. This meeting is really important. So yes, I can, change the color code of, of this particular meeting, I can add a thought tag. So I right click on the thought and I go to my thought tags. <clears throat> and tags again are multiple attributes that you can apply to a thought. So this is urgent and important. That's a tag that I've set up. I get the nice little tag icon there and I can do a search for urgent, important or open up my brain on Monday morning and say, all right, brain, show me all of my urgent, important items. I've got a database, two databases that need to be reviewed. Uh, some March meeting notes to review, June meeting notes coming up, there they are. I still have to take a look at that Amazon server, the Go West campaign, et cetera. So these are all of my urgent, important items. And notice when I hover over them, I'm gonna hover over this databases. I can see all the tags applied with this thought. So this thought databases, urgent, important. These are databases in Chicago. Oh, I probably have another database and thought somewhere else that's for my New York or for my London office. And there's an action item. I need to talk to, Be to Becky about what's going on with databases in our Chicago office. And the details of what is so urgent and important would be on the notes for that particular thought. But of course, there's my June 2018 meeting marked urgent and important so I can get to it very, very quickly and easily. But again, <clears throat> I want to have another way of making this stand out above all of these other meetings. I've got quite a few meetings that I'm keeping track of. How do I move June to the very top of the list? It's the very first thought that I want to see. I'm going to click on Alt and click on the thought. <clears throat> and I'm simply going to rename this thought dot zero one. Now I could name it dot one um, and they have other thoughts dot two, dot three, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> it's out of excuse me, out of habit uh, that I go, go with two digits. So I always start with that 01, that 02, that 03. And sometimes I'll even jump a few levels. I'll show you why in just a moment. But as soon as I rename this thought with the period at the very front, notice that it moves it up to the top of the list without actually displaying that dot 01. Um, my next most important or, or urgent meeting was this one that happened back in March 2017 meeting notes. Here's the meeting outline, but these are the meeting notes from the meeting. So once again, I'm gonna alt click and I'm going to label this one dot zero five. So it's putting them in numerical order, dot zero one first, dot zero five. The reason why I skipped this step 
is because I might have a new meeting come up in the future. So we've got this September meeting. That's where we're going to sign the actual contract. September 2018. Meeting agenda. And I'll name this one so that I can squeeze it in between that June, uh, June 2018 and March 2017. I've left myself some room with the dot zero one and the dot zero five. So whenever I'm using this, this hidden ordering system, I typically go by tens actually. Uh, so dot zero one, the next one will be dot uh, 10, dot 20, dot 30, dot 40. So if 15 comes along and then 12 comes along and then I wanna squeeze in an 11 uh, in a large grouping of thoughts, I always have the room to do that. And I don't have to go back and rename every digit that came after it. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to say dot zero four. I want it to be just above the March meeting. And I'm going to click on the little drop down menu and set this thought type as urgent as well. And also, or set the thought uh, tag as urgent, the thought type as a meeting note. There we go. So while I'm creating the thought, I can actually assign thought types and tags. So I'll just hit enter. And, uh, oh, I didn't leave a space. Uh, I put a space after, actually after the dot. So I do need to rename that. So we'll just fix that really quickly. So the brain sees it's the hidden ordering system and it snugs it up right in between, right where I want it, just between June, 2018 and the March, 2017 meeting note. I've got the thought type of meeting note and the thought tag as urgent and important. So, these thought types and tags that you can apply to your brain, it really is the next step uh, to becoming a brain expert and really utilizing the application to the full potential and full capabilities by applying these thought types and tags to groupings of large thoughts or, or anywhere in a brain that you're creating. And I mentioned just briefly, I did wanna talk about uh, creating uh, items in your brain calendar as well as utilizing the report. Again, when you open up reports, it's gonna take you to the most recently most recent report that you activated. So I was looking at active projects. I'll go back to all thoughts. So these are all thoughts in this brain, 1000 thoughts in this brain. If I need to do a review of a brain that I've been using for 10, 15, 20 years and has gotten maybe a little out, um, uh, unwieldy or there's areas in my brain that I need to uh, need to review. This is another great option for you. Rather than just navigating and clicking through your brain, you can run some reports that will really help you to clean up a brain that has aged over time. So some of the reports now here, obviously I can say, all right, show me all thoughts that I modified in the past week, the past month. So here are all my thoughts, uh, access levels, that's for syncing to the cloud time. So show me all thoughts modified between um, March 12th and April 13th. So the last month I've modified 35 thoughts. So I can review recent changes within my application, but I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna say, all right, show me all of my orphan thoughts. Orphan thoughts are thoughts that are just simply floating out there in your brain, uh, sort of like a satellite, it's not connected to anything else within the brain application. Does it need to be there or can it be deleted? You can see in this brain, I've got 29 orphan thoughts. So um, if I click on any one of these, you'll see that they don't have anything else connected uh, to that particular thought. And if I find a thought that I don't need, obviously I can right click and I'll go ahead and forget that particular thought. So I can go through and review all of my orphan thoughts. Now, just because you've got orphan thoughts in your brain doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. I actually create orphan thoughts from time to time. Let's say I'm uh, looking for a thought in my brain, some research I did on Metropolis. I think I just saw that in this orphan thought list. So Metropolis, you can see my search results shows up zero thought matches. Oh, I need a thought for Metropolis linked into my brain. So I'm gonna click on the little lightning bolt to create that thought. 
what's going to be added to that thought? Well, this is an idea for a new product that I have. It has nothing to do with Superman or Clark Kent. It's just an idea for a new product I have. I'll come back to that later. It, it doesn't link to anything. I could create a thought called new projects, new ideas, and link it up there. I'm in a hurry. I've got a bunch of ideas in my head. I just want to get them into my brain and worry about where they go and what they are later. So there's the Metropolis and then Aquarius. Not even worried if I'm spelling it correctly. Let's just hit that lightning bolt and create that orphan thought and I'll come back and modify it later. So I do that myself from time to time. And then of course, come in, review. I'll actually refresh my orphan thought list. Now there are 30 thoughts and there's Aquarius and there's Metropolis. I can now add that content or link this thought to, to the desired area in my brain where I want it to appear. So that's one way of reviewing. Another really important review uh, for a, um, an old brain or a brain that needs to be cleaned up are the duplicate thought names. So if I click on duplicate names, these are thoughts where, um, you know, I've created maps, uh, let's navigate to that thought, it falls under marketing. My other map actually falls on another marketing. I've got a few marketing, maybe I imported a brain twice into this brain, it's time for me to review. And if I decide, oh, this is the data that I don't need, or this map uh, thought the content is old, this XML file, I don't need that anymore, I can right click and forget that thought. And I'll forget this map thought as well. And it takes you back to the last activated thought. So I can really meticulously go through and review all of these orphan thoughts. And now these are my duplicate thoughts, where they appear, why they're in here more than once. I've got two website budgets. I don't need them both. So once again, I'm going to right click and forget to get rid of that duplicate that I no longer need. So a very, very great way of reviewing the data in your brain by running those reports. And then the final component, really a component that I wanna share with you to uh, give you an idea of, of more features that exist in the brain that we don't always get a chance to demo. And that is, I'm gonna actually minimize my report and open up my timeline. Very quickly, the timeline in the brain is really a great way to set a particular date for an, uh, an event and have the brain remind you about the event. So if you haven't discovered the timeline yet, uh, it's a great way to have more information in your digital brain so you're not relying on your own organic brain to recall specific upcoming events. Now in that reach out ad campaign, if you remember, we've got that June 2008 meeting. So I'm going to go to month view down below, week view, there's month view, and I'll scroll. I can scroll by clicking and dragging. I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in and out, uh, but back to month view, there it is, June 2018. So let's say on June uh, 15th, all day event, I'm just going to click and drag. Now I clicked and dragged to create an all day event. Um, it actually grabbed the times. I was close to all day, 1 a.m. to midnight. I'll just say all day. And June contract meeting. So give it some details. I can link it to the current active thought. So on the context menu button or the hamburger button, as we like to call it, I can attach this meeting to June. And as you can see, this particular thought now has an event associated with it. I can even edit this and have the brain send me a reminder. So a little pop-up reminder will show up uh, when this particular meeting is due. And I can even synchronize my brain with Google Calendar. So I can <clears throat> have Google Calendar actually send me an email of my reminder for my event, prior to the event. And many different choices for you there. Once again, how, as far as how you want to utilize your brain calendar, many, many brain users just simply utilize the timeline or the brain calendar for just pop-up reminders. If they're always in the same brain, they just simply pop up uh, an hour before the event or the day before, whatever you specify next to the reminder checkbox. So I want to be reminded 
maybe 21 days prior that this is coming up, I'll hit enter and just save that content. So 21 days before, I'll get that pop-up message. Or you can take it one step further and actually synchronize your brain's timeline, your brain calendar with Google Calendar. And it's a two-way sync. So all of your brain events will go into your Google Calendar and your Google Calendar events will go into your brain calendar. Definitely a more advanced feature of the application that's only available for pro combo users because it does, does utilize that sync with the Google Calendar, uh, but the feature is there and available for you. So that's everything that I really wanted to share with you today as far as cleaning up an existing brain and gardening and, and modifying your brain to, uh, to continue on, so you can continue adding new data, new content into an ever growing and evolving brain. I do want to save some time. I saved about nine minutes before the top of the hour. Uh, just to go in, I saw a couple of questions pop up, so I did want to address those questions. And uh, George had the first question, any way to completely delete all types from a brain? There's not a delete all for thought types. Um, you can certainly visit your thought types list and simply act, uh, activate the thought and then right click and Notice there's no forgetting a thought type. You go right into delete. So I would delete the active uh, project thought type. This does not delete the actual active project. They're still there. They would simply be untyped. So let me go into the meeting notes. This is the thought type that I just recently created. I'll right click and delete meeting notes, the thought type. But if we go back to reach out ad campaign, you can see my meeting notes are still there, but I've removed that thought type. So uh, no way to clear them all out with one fell swoop, uh, George, but you can certainly go through very quickly, activate a thought type, delete it, activate a thought type and delete it. Uh, and that of course is necessary from time to time. If you did import another brain uh, into your, your existing brain and maybe you've got some duplicate thought types or duplicate thought tags, you can get to them very easily, right click and delete those. And John Parkin, thank you for joining the call today, a familiar name. Uh, John asked, <clears throat> is this bad practice? You're on a newspaper archive site and you hurriedly grab one by one links, pages uh, you're interested in and dump them under an unrelated parent called, let's say, dump your thoughts under me. <clears throat> right away, I think that's good practice and I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. Um, all this, um, uh, frantic action with the internet uh, revisiting and placing, linking these uh, random children at a later date. Yes, I, no, I think that's actually a great idea. Um, I create areas in my own personal brain. I wasn't gonna open my personal brain today. Let's just say, let's just do it from scratch. Let's say under my brain, um, ideas for later. I have this in my own brain. I think I actually call it the research thought. Um, and I can simply activate that. It's connected to my home thought. So I can open my brain. I go to the home thought and I'm on the web or I receive a file. Let's get some files on the screen. There they are. So ideas for later. I want to rethink how I organize these thoughts. So great. I'll drop those two files, drag and drop. I move those into my brain. There they are, I'll come back to that later and worry about it, decide where I wanna link it to or do my research. It's a great idea. Um, I do that quite often with my own brain. And again, all of the tricks we've uh, demoed today can be applied to finding those thoughts that you brought into that, categorize this later area of your brain and start recategorizing. When you've got the time, you're in a quick rush to grab some things off the web, drop them into your brain and worry about where they go later. It's a great, great idea. And John also asked, is this uh, presentation being recorded? It absolutely is. We're recording today's demo. And that link will be available tomorrow on our website. Plus, anyone that joined the call today or signed up for the call will receive an email with the link to today's recording. And boy, the questions are really coming in now. I'm going to try and get to as many as I can in the next five minutes. Uh, Lisa has the next question. Does the dot zero one move to the top regardless of thought type? So Lisa, that is an excellent question. Let me jump back into where I actually did those. 
Notice June was a dot zero one. If I alt click, it's showing dot zero one. Below that is going to be September because these are untyped thoughts. So it's grouping all of my untyped thoughts together. Let's reapply that thought type. Uh, I'm just going to go up to edit and undo delete meeting notes. There we go. So I've got my meeting notes back in and notice I can right click on the back and arrange thoughts by name or arrange thoughts by thought type. So there's different ways that you can apply your thought types and tags. And if I arrange thoughts by name, there you can see my June, September, and March because they are, if I alt click, they are uh, created with the hidden ordering system, the .01, .04, and .05. So if you do want them to go to the top of the list, regardless of their thought type, just right click on the background and change your ordering by thought name. And now this is after the .01, 2, and 3, everything is alphabetical. The winning Edge, Amazon, April, April, checklist, et cetera. So a couple of different scenarios that you can play around with there to, uh, to sort of best uh, create the display that works for you. And again, that's just right clicking and arranging thoughts by their thought name, by their thought type, date modified, these kind of overrule uh, the feature of the hidden ordering system, these final three. If I arrange by date modified, uh, if I go in and modify a thought, maybe I might be wrong, checklist number two. Come back to it. Notice checklist number two came right back up to the top of the uh, the top of the group because that was the most recently modified. So that actually overrides the hidden naming system. So many different features for you to play around with and create a scenario that works best for your thought grouping. <clears throat> and Kirby asked the question, uh, again, with the .01.02, what happens if I use .015? No problem. I'm going to switch back to thought, uh, range thoughts by type. And let's say in another meeting note, February. Oops, I'm adding it to a feature list. There we go. Alt click and I say dot zero one five February. So <clears throat> with the dot zero one five, notice that it actually goes to the very bottom of the list. It's not, you know, dot zero one and a half. It's dot zero one five. So um, it's the very bottom of the list. And typically, if you are going to be utilizing that hidden ordering system that much, you know, grouping that big with hundreds of child thoughts, um, I would start out with .001, .002, .003, et cetera. So uh, .015 is not going to squeeze in between .01 and .02, if I have a feeling that's what you were, were wondering about. And uh, the next question came in from Dan, who asked, is there a way to have internal images or PDFs in a thought to show as thumbnails or a gallery type view? Absolutely. Now, not as a thumbnail. As a thumbnail, I think I had some thoughts here that were PDFs. Um, you're just going to see the PDF icon, but the PDF itself will show up over in the content window. This is a new feature of the Brain 9. If you're familiar with the Brain 8 and you're wondering if you should make the jump to the Brain 9, one of the great features of the Brain 9 is here I've got a website with or a, a thought with a web page attached. Notice that the website is loading up here in the content window. I don't have to leave uh, the Brain or launch this attachment in a browser because it's loading up the URL right there in the content window. Uh, even as you can see, all the animations are displaying, and I can continue clicking and navigating through this website and, and load that, that content up right there within the brain. And PDFs display this way as well. Um, let me just grab a PDF. There we go. So if I drag and drop a corporate framework to the PDF, probably not really a corporate framework. This is a sample directory of sample documents but a PDF nonetheless, and boom, over on the right, uh, the PDF is uh, previewing. So even Word documents and spreadsheets will uh, preview for you. You can't edit or modify those attached documents within the brain, 
but they will preview. So if you leave your content window open, um, you know, you do have the option of minimizing and closing your content window. But if you do leave that open, all of your PDFs will auto preview in the content window, as well as web pages, et cetera. And I think we've got time for one more question. I saw Hunter write in uh, with a long one. So let's scroll down. Hunter asked the question, could you uh, communicatively summarize the defining dimensions that the brain makes use of? Uh, uh, for example, to kick off the list, two spatial dimensions, thought categories, parent, jump, child, color, background, color of text, color, highlight bubble, et cetera, uh, hidden ordering, and what else? So, so um, very, very interesting question, Hunter, and very, uh, very deep. Um, uh, as far as dimensional views of the brain, let me give you just the quick layout of the brain. The current thought in the very center of your brain is the active thought, that's the current focus. And around the active thought, we have everything that's related to that active thought in one generational way. So it's child thoughts or subcategories down below. It's parent thoughts are up above. And keep in mind, a thought can have more than one parent thought. Here's instant dynamics. It falls under important clients, communications, media entertainment, service level gold. So four different categories. That's where the brain really differentiates itself from typical file and folder type of structure, whereas instant dynamics would be a folder inside a subfolder somewhere else. You could have shortcuts, but you could never see them all at once as you can with the brain visualizing all the different categories this thought falls into. Uh, sibling thoughts, those are related to the parent thoughts. They share a same parent thought. And finally, a jump thought. And this is where you really break away from hierarchical structures, uh, something that's related to the active thought but doesn't necessarily own the active thought or fall into as a subcategory. Um, so that's the normal view. And then there's the hidden views that are out there. There's the child or excuse me, the thought types and the actual thought uh, tags. So instant dynamics is also one of our clients. So if I click on clients, there's all the clients down below and instant dynamics is fitting into this category as well because they're cla classified as a client. Um, and if it's an urgent client that I'm working with or not urgent, et cetera, it might fall into those categories as well. So that's sort of a, I, I, <laughs> it's a little bizarre to call it this, but the hidden dimension of the brain, all the different thought types and tags. And there's many different ways to visualize those uh, thought types and tags, either one by one uh, here by selecting, all right, show me all of my people thought types or all of my directors or running a report. Show me all of my thought types that are active projects or th that are clients and thought tags urgent. So I've got one urgent client, Comworld. So I'm doing a combination over on the right. Um, again, sort of a hidden dimension of the brain, you, uh, filtering by thought types and tags. But let me share this with you. Um, you can always go into your brain and visualize more than just one generation away from the active thought. So I'm gonna go back to instant dynamics. I'm going to maximize my screen real estate. So I'm gonna minimize my notes over on the right. And I'm gonna make my brain itself a little bit smaller and I'm going to turn on mind map view. Mind map view allows you to display more than one generation away from the active thought. So notice here's instant dynamics. Its subcategories are some active projects all together now, reach out, um, uh, Delta Corporation, the uh, sub -com company of instant dynamics, feed the world, et cetera. Now, if I want to expand those or uh, minimize those, notice I can hover over a thought to collapse. So I'm not displaying those thoughts or my reach out ad campaign, I will uh, collapse that thought as well. Or I can hover over a thought and expand. So it's up to me to decide what display. I'm gonna go up to my customers uh, or here, we'll go to my communications. I'll right click and activate this thought. 
these are all my communication clients. So if I want to visualize AT&T, I click on the plus. Some of these don't have a whole lot of content. And if I ever want to minimize, again, there's a little minus sign that appears. And so this is multiple dimensions uh, within the brain. And you can actually just click on the plus sign up above and expand everything and just go out. It depends on uh, your screen real estate. But if you've got a monitor, I've got another monitor over to the right, very large monitor, high resolution. I can really minimize the size of the plex, all my interconnected dots and just click plus, 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 and visualize every thought in my entire brain to really get the big picture of how it's all fitting together. That's called the mind map view. We also have a more linear outline view as well. So you can see I'm just uh, find a category and expand everything below that category. All the subcategories of my communication clients, here they all are. And again, it really depends on the type of screen real estate that you have available to make these, uh, create these visualizations of the plaques within the application. Uh, so many, many different options for you, and it's really up to you how you want to visualize. That's why we typically start with introducing people to the normal view, because uh, it's very focused. It's the current active thought with one generation away from the active thought. Uh, typical mind map applications are showing you everything all the time. And it's hard to zoom in and really concentrate on specifically uh, one project. This is a very large brain with a lot of data, a lot of even different departments. I've got a whole research and development and an IT department that I'm managing in this particular brain. That's not my current focus. I don't need to see that on the screen right now. So I'm in normal view and I'm simply focused on my reach out ad campaign. And I can simply spread out or, or uh, uh, grow from there. If I wanna click the plus sign, two generations away from the active thought, et cetera. Many different viewing options. So Hunter, I hope that gives you some ideas of how you can use the brain and see the multi dimensions of the digital brain that you're creating. And I hope everyone, thank you so much. I see that the question panel actually just doubled <laughs> So a lot of new questions came, uh, that came in, uh, obviously not all that we were able to, uh, to get to today, but I do encourage you to join uh, the Brain 101. We have a Brain 101 class every Friday and uh, feel free to log into the Brain 101 if you're just getting started and you thought maybe today might have been a little overwhelming or send those qu questions into support at thebrain.com. We've got a fantastic support team and uh, you'll get a personalized response right away from any additional questions that you may have that we uh, unfortunately weren't able to get to today. I do see a few questions came up about mobile devices. For some reason, that's popping up quite a bit. Yes, absolutely. We do have mobile applications of the brain as well. So there's more information on our website. If you go to thebrain.com and uh, under products, you can go right into iOS or Android, and there's a link to get to the App Store or the Google Play Store where you can actually get a mobile application of the brain. So I believe, so here is my digital brain, and I can just tap to launch the application. And this is a local copy of the brain as well. So my digital brain that I use on a daily basis is here, all my information. Uh, about my brain. So there, I've got my food area, recipes, etc. under me in my personal brain on my mobile device. And down below, uh, links so I can add a note, add a file attachment, or access a file attachment, and also sync. So I can sync my brain with the brain cloud to keep this copy of the brain in sync with my desktop copy or my laptop copy as well. So definitely some mobile applications available for you for the brain. So thanks everyone for joining me today. It's been a pleasure uh, sharing these more advanced features. Again, we're always available at support at thebrain.com if you have more questions. And I look forward to speaking with you again. Enjoy the rest of the week. And most importantly, enjoy your brain. Thanks everyone. Bye.